Welcome into another episode of the Never Drop Podcast. It's been a little minute. That's my bad. Had to get some stuff straightened out. But we're back and we're better than ever because we have an undisputed title fight coming to us this weekend with Devin Haney, the undisputed champion at 135, taking on Challenger in one of the most decorated amateurs and professionals, Vasil Lomachenko. That's coming to you live from Las Vegas this Saturday, and I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to talk about it, predict it, break it down, all of it. That fight is a fight that's honestly been three to four years in the making. Devin won this fight four years ago. Loma got elevated in status championship-wise. I promise we'll get into all this. You know, it didn't happen. Then COVID hits. Loma takes a loss to Tiafimo Lopez. Devin goes on his path. And looking at today, Devin is the undisputed champion at 135. Well, I promise we'll get in all of it, get in the history, get in the predictions, everything about it. But first, man, this is the Never Drop Podcast, where we cover boxing news, boxing fights, breakdowns, uh, predictions, recaps, reviews of fights, all of it. We do it all. So if you're listening on streaming services, say like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Podcast, I'd really appreciate if you go ahead and follow the podcast on those. Make sure you keep are keeping up to date with what I'm dropping, man. Boxing's been great this, uh, wow, it's been five months into the year. Boxing's great these five months, and it looks like it's going to continue to be. So with that, follow that. If you're listening on YouTube. I know I got a lot of new subscribers from YouTube and I appreciate you from the tank fight. You know, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. If you are and you're listening, hey, throughout this video, let me know. Comment something. Let me know how it is. Uh, If you're not subscribed to the YouTube, it's just the Never Drop Podcast. Go on there. I got videos of uh, the tank fight up there and more fights to come that I'm going to. So I appreciate you. If you're listening on streaming or on YouTube, I appreciate you. Follow, subscribe. But back to the fight, man. This is going to be a great tactical chess uh, match-like fight. And we're going to see, really, I mean, Devin's called this for this fight for years. Loma wants it now. He wants that undisputed title to his name. I guess we'll find out. So enough prepping it up. Let's let's talk about this fight. All right, so I was talking about the history between this matchup, right? it has been four years in the making. And stick with me. I'll go through it. Stick with me, though, because it's a lot of boxing. Pol- it's not a lot of boxing politics, but there's some politicking that, you know, if you're a Haney fan, if you're Devin Haney, you're under the impression Loma ducked you back in 2019. Right. So obviously, Devin's only 24 now. He's 24. and He's undisputed. He, his career trajectory is nothing but skyrocketing. But back in 2019, Loma was the man at 135, and Haney was coming up. Haney was 20, and he wanted Loma. Haney's proved that he wants the biggest fights. He wants the biggest challenges. You know, he talks about he's fighting for legacy. That was the case back in 2019, too. He was wanting to go against Loma for the belt Loma had. So at the time, Devin Haney becomes the uh, WC mandatory challenge. for. So one of the belts Loma was holding, Devin Haney was the challenger. He, you know... He was next in line to fight Loma. All of a sudden, WBC makes a quote-unquote franchise champion. So they make Loma. It's something like you have some sort of, you've displayed a great, you're a great ambassador for the sport. Not everyone can be franchise champion, but basically means you don't have to fight your mandatories. You can kind of choose who you want to fight. So... This really means Loma doesn't have to fight Devin Haney if he doesn't want to back in 2019, right? They give Loma the status of franchise champion, and then they go. Uh, they give Haney the uh, title going from intern, interim champion to world champion. So he, uh, Haney does have a world championship, but he didn't necessarily have to fight for it, and Loma doesn't want to fight him, so Loma's going to choose someone else. Loma... Obviously, does not fight Devin Haney, and that's been a point of contention for a while now from the Haney camp. They talk about that Loma was ducking him, did not want to fight him back in 2019. And if you're asking, okay, well, that's 2019. Why, why didn't these two get a fight done between now and then? You know, that's four years. Just remember the time, right? 2019, going to 2020, global pandemic. 
Loma takes his loss to Tiafimo Lopez in 2020. That was late 2020, so at, when they officially were able to start boxing again, he lost to Tiafimo Lopez. Lost all his belts. You know, that sets up Tiafimo to fight George Cambosis, lose to Cambosis, Devin Haney to come in, beat Cambosis twice, which he was dominant. We'll talk about those uh, last two fights. You know, and now he's undisputed. So honestly, Loma's decision back then in 2019 to not fight Haney was kind of the point that got us to this point where Devin is undisputed. Say he'd fought Devin, well, there we go. One of the two would probably likely become undisputed still, the winner. The other would, you know, I'm sure I'm, a young Devin would still have a great career. But with the fact that Loma did not fight him and then lost to Tifimo Lopez, that says that set the stage for Devin Haney to come, I wouldn't say from the back door, but to come in and say, hey, let me fight for Undisputed. So we did, and so he's won. Right, but still, that's just one loss. You know, Haney and Loma still could have fought, right? Well, Haney actually, when he fought Cambosis, right, this is something important. He's on a three-fight deal with the top rank in ESPN. Two for the Cambosis fight. So the first fight and the rematch, which he absolutely dominated in. And then the third was for Loma, right? Bill Haney, Devin's trainer, father, he wants this fight. He wants to prove to Loma, to prove to everyone, hey, I'm not scared of this dude. We can beat this dude, right? Devin's talked about, I want to send him to retirement. So they want this fight. But when Cambosis had Undisputed, Loma had the choice whether he wanted to fight for Undisputed or his home country, Ukraine, was being invaded and he was going to go to war for them. Obviously, he chose to go to war for his country and banked on, hey, I, I hope to have another chance at Undisputed. I think I will, hopefully, someday down the line, but I got to do this for my country. So then the opportunity is presented to Devin Haney. He goes, beats Cambosis twice, and now, hey, we're here. Haney gets his fight with Loma, and Loma gets his chance at Undisputed. Took a few years, but we're back. Right, so that's the history between the two. One potentially was ducking a young Devin Haney while on his path to Undisputed, got disturbed, but now you got to go through Devin Haney to be Undisputed for Loma. Just kind of interesting how everything in the lightweight division kind of revolves in, you know, you got outsiders too, such as uh, Tank David, people over at Showtime. But really, it's ESPN, top rank, who's fighting for that undisputed uh, titles. You got Loma, Tifima Lopez, back when he was at 135, uh, George Kambosis, now Devin Haney. I'm sure Shakur will get a chance soon. Hey, we got to see what happens on Saturday. Speaking of Saturday, let's kind of get into what each of these fighters possess, what their strengths and weaknesses, and what their couple previous fights, you know, if there are any indicators, you know, what are they indicating? What's this fight going to look like? Let's get, in, get into all that. All right, so there's some numbers that I think that are going to play a key role into this fight. Looking at, all right, let's just look at both of these fighters. So Devin Haney, 29-0, 15 knockouts, orthodox fighting position, so he's right-handed. 5'8 in height with a 71 inch reach. I think the reach is going to play a huge, huge part in this fight. Because look at this Lomachenko, 17 and 2, 11 KOs. He had one loss, I believe, like his second pro fight. I'm not sure. Something early, early in his career. And then obviously the loss to Tiafimo Lopez. He's a southpaw, a height of 5'7. But his reach is 65 and a half inches. Okay. Devin in this fight is going to want to keep it on the outside. Loma wants to get on the inside. And the reach being what? That's a five and a half inch difference. Devin already has one of the best jabs in the sport of boxing. To keep Loma at bay, he's going to have to use his reach advantage and just the jab. Something he's mastered. He's really mastered. He gets comparisons to Floyd Mayweather and good reason with that jab. Just flicks it out there and it does it does some damage. So I think that reach is really important. If there's anything in this fight that's important, it's the reach. Because I think stylistically, you know, it favors Devin and it's unfavorable for uh, Lomachenko. But looking at their last fights... 
obviously Devin. He had fought George Cambosis uh, twice in Australia. And there's a chance he didn't lose out of 24 rounds he fought with Cambosis. I've talked about this before. You know, g- going back and looking, he might have won, say, 22. Heck, he might have won all 24 rounds he fought against George Cambosis. He was dominant. Really, there's no other word than dominant. He was dominating George Cambosis in his home country. I know the second fight, he clinched a lot. And I I think I'll expect to see that in the Lomachenko fight because I don't think he wants to get on the inside with Loma. You hear his camp talk about they're dirty. And I think that's kind of just prepping the scene for, hey, you know, we don't want to get in an inside battle with Loma. Something to look out for, right? You know, this was uh, the Cambosis fight was the fight. Hey, and he won undisputed as we talked about before. That fight was in October, October 16th. So we're looking at, what, a seven-month layoff for Devin? For Devin, I want to see what he weighs in at, right? He's not a 135er anymore. That While he's fighting in 135, if you look at him, he looks like he should be in the 140 division with, in a few years, going to the 147 division. That's just how it looks. Like, his body right now... I'm not sure it can handle a massive weight cut down to 135. But obviously for this fight, he's at 135, and that's where the money fights are. That's where he talks about legacy. That's kind of where the legacy fights are right now. You got Shakur, you got Tank. You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep pushing your body to the absolute limit at 135? Or are you going to go up, which naturally you should, to 140, potentially 147 down the line? Right, that it'll be interesting to see at the weigh-in how he looks, because at the Cambosis weigh-in he did not look good. At least his face looked like he did everything to get down at that weight, and now hey, it's been seven months. So we'll see. We will see how Devin looks come the weigh-in. Uh, that was his last fight, last two fights, really. Loma's last fight was right around a week or so, week and a half later than Devin's fight. His last fight was on October 29th, so same amount of layoff. Obviously, Loma had the longer layoff being in Ukraine. That was a win against uh, Jermaine Ortiz, but Loma didn't look like prime Loma. It looked like he had had time off, and he kind of looked lackluster. But as I've heard many people point out, Loma's had these type of fights. He's had... He looks kind of lackluster, and then the next fight, he looks back to Prime Loma. So are we going to get Prime Loma in this Haney fight? Because if we are, then Haney might be in for a long night. That's the thing. What Loma is going to show up Saturday night? Because the Loma that looked that fought Jermaine Ortiz, that's not getting the job done. The Loma that fought Teofimo Lopez and was scared to throw a punch until, say, the 8th round, ninth round. Then he started throwing and was dominating. That's too late. It, Devin will stack these rounds and just continuously, hey, if you're not going to throw out, throw a couple jabs, win a round. Right? Neither of these fighters, I don't think this fight is not uh, ending in a knockout. This will be a decision fight. So which fighter is going to stack those rounds? Or is it going to be a war every round? You know, whose round is this? We saw Devin, he would stack those early rounds against Cambosis. And then Cambosis, I trying to be wild not wild necessarily but he's desperate he's trying to get any of these rounds and he just couldn't at that point because he was being so desperate slash wild that Devin Devin was easily avoiding those punches and countering and clinching you know it turned out to be easy work so what Loma are we gonna see I bring up the Tiafima Lopez you know Loma lost to him October 2020 like I just said right He didn't get off to a fast start. He really, later in the rounds, say 8th, ninth, 10th, you know, those rounds, then he started looking like Loma, like he figured it out. But he took way too long to go against Tifima Lopez, and it cost him the fight. Cost him a chance at Undisputed back then, because he would have gone on to fight uh, Cambosis. There we go. What Loma is going to make his appearance? I I think a pretty good Loma is, personally, for me. I think you realize he didn't look, he didn't fight good against uh, Jermaine Ortiz. Well, he had some nice shots. He had some nice left hook, uh, not left hooks, excuse me, left straights. 
Overall, hey, one of the Georgia uh, judges' scorecard, I think, had him winning s- seven rounds to Jermaine Ortiz's five. So, you know, one more round for Ortiz, that's a you know draw between Lomo, one of the judges' cards. And there were overall close scores from the judges. So there's the Loma that's going to show up, try and punish their combinations, throw the left hand, try and confuse Devin. Going to show up? We'll see. We will see. You know, that's what makes this fight such a chess match. Because even uh, we know Loma's past his prime. Because his prime rained on forever. I saw, I heard someone say, I think I heard Devin say, for many boxing or people that don't listen or watch boxing necessarily, Loma, while I've said he has two losses, he has over 400 fights, both amateur and professional. Right, he was an amateur for a long time. Combining his amateur and his professional record, he's has over 400 wins with around three losses. Let that sink in. He's been, he has over 400 wins with only three losses and probably 20 years of boxing. So this isn't just a guy who's, oh, we lost to Tifima Lopez. He would have won that fight if he would have figured it out and threw more shots at the beginning. It's just, this is no easy test for Devin. Especially if Aloma, determined, comes out looking to throw punches and get off first and dominate foot-wise, footwork, being a southpaw, take advantage against that. This can be no easy fight for Devin. We will see. We will see. And I think, I don't know if you guys know which way I'm leaning for this prediction. Usually in the past, you kind of know where I'm standing. But I think this one, hey, because it's, it's such a good fight, great fight. It's hard to pick one. But I'm going to give you all my prediction right here. All right. So my prediction for this fight, I told you already, I don't think a knockout's going to happen. I think this fight is going the distance. And who's going who's gonna to win? Who's going to win the chess match? That's what they're promoting it as, a chess match. And that's honestly what it is. Two really great boxers trying to figure each other out in the ring. Who do I have winning? I got Devin Haney by decision. I think Haney being the bigger guy. Obviously, he's not a 135 anymore. He's 140. We talked about that. And I think, man, he's just entering his prime. He is just entering his prime while Loma's slowly fading. Not, I want to say fading, but he's not the same Loma. We, that's fair enough to say we all know that he's not the same Loma as he once was. And I think it's just Devin Haney's time. But along with that, inside the ring, I think the reach is going to play a major, major factor in this fight. Because I don't think Devin wants to get on the inside with Loma. I said this earlier. I think Loma... Anytime he will get in the inside, Haney will try and tie him up. I think so. Kind of similar to the Tank and Ryan fight. When Ryan, in the first round, first round and a half, was kind of throwing punches, getting on the inside, Tank would tie him up. I think it'll be like that with Devin Haney because I don't think he wants Loma to get on the inside because I think Loma can do damage on the inside. And we haven't seen Devin in these necessarily difficult predicaments yet because Cambosis obviously really posed no threat for him while he was undisputed Haney was levels above Cambosis looking back on it at the time you know that's a solid matchup obviously but looking back on it Cambosis honestly looked like he shouldn't have even been in the ring with him but I think the jab of Devin will play a major part in this fight that's I think that's the one key punch out of all of the da- jab of Devin Haney. Because Devin doesn't necessarily throw combos like that. He'll throw a one, two, you know, a left, a left jab, a right hand. But he doesn't, he's not going to throw a four punch combination because he, he, he's not a risk taking fighter necessarily. He's not, he's a smart fighter, but he's not going to, you know, leave himself exposed trying to throw combos and knock someone out. He's going to try and outbox you. And I believe that's what he's going to do to Loma. He's going to outbox him. Well, I believe Loma will put on a good showing. I got Haney in this fight winning by decision. And Vegas is going to be a great fight. 
It's going to be great. And what's next, right? For Haney, he has his pick, man. Does he go to 140? Does he stay? Fight a Shakur? Fight a Tank? We don't know. His deal with top rank in ESPN ends after this. What is it? Does he sign with someone else? What's he do? We will see. But first, he's got to get through Lomachenko, which I believe he will. We'll see what happens, right? Hey, say Loma wins. He's undisputed at 135. What's next? I'd assume a Shakur fight because I think ESPN will try and keep the undisputed titles in-house. But we will see, man. So for Saturday night, I got Devin Haney winning by decision using the jab that he has to defeat Lomachenko. All right, yeah, so that's my prediction. What I think will happen this Saturday in an undisputed title fight at 135. Appreciate you guys listening in. You know, this is going to be a great fight. We've talked, we've had some really good fights, some really great fights to start this year. Can't even say to start this year, honestly, through this year. And this this will be another one added to the list. This is a boxing fan's present right here. If you like high tactics, high stakes, you know, this is the fight. This is the fight. Haney versus Lomachenko Saturday night in Las Vegas. This will be a good one. This will be a good one. And I'm looking forward, man. Boxing just keeps on putting out great fights. We'll see what's next. I apologize for, I think it's close to a month since. A little under a month last time I recorded. Just had to come back from college. Everything. But we're back. We're back for the, we're back for the summer. We're going to be better than, better than ever. Right, so I appreciate you guys. Again, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple, Amazon Podcast, I'd really appreciate if you follow me on those so you're up to date on when I drop. And then if you're on YouTube or you don't follow the YouTube or subscribe to the YouTube, the Never Drop Podcast is all you got to type in. Subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what you think about the uh, podcast. And yeah, appreciate you guys tuning in, listening. I got Devin, the Dream Haney, over Vasily Lomachenko in this fight. That's it. We will see. We will see what happens Saturday night and what the future holds for both of these fighters. Because if Lomachenko wins, the lightweight division, a lot of people will be calling for him. And if Devin wins, he has a decision to make. Stay at 135 with the money and the legacy fights are right now? Or go up to... A 140 division that he would be clearly the most exciting and best fighter, I believe, at 140. Saturday night, we're in for a good one. I appreciate you listening to the Never Drop podcast. That's it. I'm out. Peace.